This is a presentation on electrocardiography, dysrhythmia interpretation, and management. So in this presentation, we'll be introducing the concept of EKGs, as well as talking about some basic dysrhythmias that can occur. So before we jump into EKG interpretation, let's do a quick review of some of the properties of the heart. So remember, our heart is a pump. It needs to squeeze, it needs to contract to get blood out to the rest of our body. So in order for that contraction to happen, we need electricity and action potentials to cause contraction of those cells and of that muscle. And this sequence of events, this coordinated electrical activity is called the cardiac cycle. So you can see in the image next to some of the text here where we start with the SA node, the electricity travels down the heart, and as the electricity moves down the heart, different parts of the heart contract in kind of a synchronous mechanical event so that blood is moving through the heart effectively. So that's the cardiac cycle, is that electricity followed by a mechanical squeezing or contraction. Now automaticity describes how pacemaking cells can generate a stimulus. So what does that mean? So pacemaking cells are little groups of cells that have the capacity or the ability to start a beat to start electricity. So they're not necessarily waiting for a signal from somebody else. They are automatically and independently deciding when to fire. So things like the SA node or the AV node, both of those nodes have automaticity because they can decide when to start a beat. And we'll get into that in a little bit more as we talk about other EKG rhythms. So next up is an ectopic focus or ectopy. This is not normal. So an ectopic focus is thinking about a little group of cells outside of this pink tract that you see uh, to the right of your slide. So that's our normal path of electricity. However, if we had a little group of cells outside of that normal chain of events, that would be called an ectopic focus when that group of cells decides to fire away at will. So it could happen just once, it could happen repeatedly, but basically you have an area or a focus where these cells are firing out of turn in a sense. So when you start to see evidence of this on your EKG strip, that's called ectopy. And this is kind of an umbrella term. It describes any group of cells or any abnormal uh, firing of electricity. And we'll get into some of the details later. So why would we have this, in a sense, misbehaving group of cells outside of our normal sequence of events? Well, this is essentially going to happen when your heart is stressed. So things like electrolyte imbalances, for instance, hypokalemia, ischemia, which will occur during a myocardial infarction, some kind of injury to the heart, which can also happen during a myocardial infarction, necrosis of the tissue, stretching of the tissue, so overstretching that may happen in heart failure, even hypoxemia. So a number of things can happen that will lead to ectopy. And ectopy can be very benign, where we see a little evidence of ectopy, but our patient looks totally fine. Or ectopy can be very serious, where we see a lot of ectopy and our patients are starting to lose consciousness, maybe they're becoming very lethargic, their vital signs are starting to show some signs of poor perfusion. So ectopy can be very serious or very benign. So let's review the normal electrical conduction in the heart. This is something I highly, highly recommend that you review until it is crystal clear. Because if you have a really clear understanding of the normal cardiac cycle, it is going to be much easier for you to understand when something goes wrong, when we start to talk about dysrhythmias. So let's begin. The electricity in the heart, or the cardiac cycle, begins in the SA node. The SA node is also known as the pacemaker. So the SA node basically gets to decide what your heart rate is going to be. And normally it's between 60 and 100 beats per minute. So if my SA node decides that my heart rate is going to be 74, it is going to fire 74 times a minute and trigger this electrical cascade or this cardiac cycle 74 times a minute. That's in a normal heart. So once the firing has begun in the SA node and the pace has been set, 
the electricity goes from the SA node throughout the Bachmann's bundle, throughout both of the right and left atria, and then ends up in the AV node. Now I'm going to stop here. What just happened? So we sent electricity from the SA node down to the AV node. So look at this picture and recognize that both the right and left atria have just contracted. So sending electricity from the SA node to the AV node causes right and left atrial contraction. So causing depolarization in the right and left atria. So what are we doing? We are squeezing blood from the atria down into the ventricles. So now the electricity has gone from the SA node through Bachmann's bundle and the right and left atria, and it's ending up at the AV node. Now the AV node, remember, this is also has automaticity. These are also pacemaking cells, but we do not really want our AV node to be a pacemaker. Think of this as a backup pacemaker. So in a normal heart, the AV node is very compliant. It does what it's told. It waits for the signal, and then it sends the signal further along. But just be aware that it has automaticity. It has that capacity. So we've contracted our atria. Electricity is now at the AV node. Now the blood, you can see, is going to go down into the right and left ventricles. But we have to give it a little bit of time to actually fill up the ventricles. So what happens is as electricity hits the AV node, there's this tiny little pause to allow the ventricles to fill up. Once that pause has happened, then the electricity is allowed to move down through the right and left bundle branches that are kind of between the right and left ventricles, and then scoop around the ventricles up through the Purkinje fibers. So what's happening when the electricity does that? we are contracting the ventricles now. So we are squeezing the right and left ventricles and sending blood out to the lungs or out to the body. Remember, left side of the heart is going to pump to the body, right side of the heart is going to pump to the lungs, but these are both happening simultaneously because we're squeezing both ventricles at the same time. So remember, SA node to the AV node, little pause, down the right and left bundle branches, up to the Purkinje fibers. So we have atrial contraction, little pause, filling up the ventricles, ventricular contraction. And then we have a longer pause allowing for this ventricular repolarization, which means the ventricles are allowing the passage of electrolytes to reset, in a sense, the charge on that muscle so that it's ready for the next beat. So that would be that pause between beats. So let's take a quick quiz. You notice some abnormalities in your patient's EKG that show some parts of the heart are firing out of turn. What would you call this? One, automaticity. Two, ectopy. Three, the cardiac cycle. Four, a missed beat. Pause the slide and consider your answer. The correct answer is ectopy. Remember, an ectopic focus is a little group of cells in the heart that is firing out of turn and not following the cardiac cycle. Here's our next question. A cell or group of cells that can initiate a cascade of electrical activity in the heart has what property? Automaticity, ectopy, independence, automatism. Pause the presentation and consider your answer. The correct answer is automaticity. Remember, this is the property that the SA node has, for example. The AV node also has this property where they can actually begin the electrical cascade and technically determine the heart rate. So what is an EKG or ECG? These are used interchangeably. Well, basically we're talking about a number of different pictures of the same heart from different angles simultaneously. So an example here is with a tree. This might make it a little easier. So imagine a bunch of different photographers taking pictures of the same tree at the same point in time, but they're all positioned a little differently. You can see one person's laying down, looking up at the branches. Another one is facing down, looking at the roots. Another one is facing the front. A different photographer is taking a picture at the back of the tree. So it's the same tree and the same moment in time, but we can see all the different elements of it by taking pictures from all different angles. 
the photographer taking a picture of the roots can't see the branches up high and vice versa. So what if all of these people were filming? Let's say they all stood at their spot for 10 minutes and filmed the tree from their spot for those exact 10 minutes. And then when time was up, we had four different TV screens and we could watch the same tree, the same 10 minute video from our four different angles over the same 10 minutes. So maybe one photographer was able to see a bird, another one was able to see a bug, one saw the wind moving the branches, but the other one couldn't see that because of the angle that they had. So an EKG is a similar concept. We're looking at the same patient's heart over time, but we use a lot of different simultaneous cameras, per se, to see different parts of the heart. And if we really wanna see what's going on in this part, in this heart and everywhere in the heart, we need all of these different views. So let's see what this concept might look like with an EKG. So take a look at the blue letters and numbers, the V1, V2, all the way up to V6, curling up from left to right. These are all camera positions in a sense. They're taking pictures of that heart you see in the middle. Now look back at the EKG complex next to each of those blue letters and numbers. If you didn't look too closely, they might actually look quite similar, but the pictures are changing as you move around the heart. And if you were to compare V1 and V6, you can actually see quite a difference in how it changes according to the perspective of this quote-unquote camera position. So we keep saying camera, but what is actually used in an EKG? Well, to get these images, we put what are called electrodes on our patient. You may have done this in the past or seen it. Uh, these are those little stickers that connect to wires on your patient's chest. And these are positive and a negative electrodes, and they send signals to each other to create images that can be sent back to the EKG machine to produce what's called an EKG tracing. Now, each of the images produced by a pair of electrodes is called a lead. So the electrode is that sticker you put on your patient's chest, and the lead is the image that the electrode produced by communicating with another electrode. So for example, if the electrode on the left arm, called LA, were getting a signal from the electrode on the right arm, called RA, then that produces a lead, and we just happen to call this lead, lead 1, and you can see the tracing here. So as you might guess, more leads will give us a more comprehensive view of what's going on in the heart. So now when you hear 12 lead EKG, it should make sense why this is the gold standard for diagnosing a myocardial infarction. I'm gonna get 12 different views of someone's heart at the same time so we can really see what might be going on. So when a 12 lead EKG is printed out, it's like going back to our tree example and watching all of those videos of different viewpoints of the tree simultaneously. Here we can see a moment in time for this patient's heart from 12 different views or leads. So here you can see where lead one shows up on the 12 lead EKG printout. See if you can find leads 2, 3, AVF, AVL, V1 through V6. Pause the slide if you need to. Also, you will see along the bottom here, they've taken the lead 2 tracing and the V1 tracing and showed a longer 10 second strip. And this is because the little snippets of each of the 12 leads above are only two and a half seconds long. So we can't really get an idea of what their rhythm is. Therefore, these longer 10 second strips at the bottom help us see if there's any issues with the rhythm. So if a 12 lead EKG is the gold standard, why is there a five lead and a three lead EKG? Well, what do you think it's like for this patient to have all of these stickers and wires all over them? And who puts them on and who manages them and who changes out old electrodes for new ones? So for a patient who's being monitored continuously during their hospital stay, Keeping a 12 lead EKG on the patient is somewhat excessive. Rather, having five different images of the heart is plenty if we just want to monitor the patient's rhythm. So this is typically what you'll see in telemetry units and ICUs. Now, what about this three lead EKG? Well, again, let's think about how long it takes to set up a 12 lead EKG and really even a five lead EKG. If a patient has been found down after a motor vehicle accident, they've lost consciousness, they're bleeding profusely, time is of the essence. We don't want to waste a single second putting on more electrodes than we have to, but we do need to see something. Do they have a heart rhythm? So for emergencies where every second counts, a three lead is often used. 
and also for a stable patient that's being transported either out of the hospital to a facility or maybe between units within a hospital, sometimes a 3-lead EKG system is also used. So be sure that you know how and where to place electrodes for a 5-lead EKG. Pause this presentation and review 5-lead EKG placement here, and there are some tricks you can use to remember where they're placed. So another key reminder is that as two electrodes communicate and produce a lead in this EKG tracing, they are recording the summation of depolarization and repolarization during the cardiac cycle. Why is this important? Well, if there is big electricity going on in the ventricle, let's say, and at the same time there's just a little bit of electricity or depolarization going on in the atria, we aren't going to see both separately we will only see the total amount of electricity in voltage for that one point in time from that one lead.